Welcome to Kermit Uncut, where we're doing our half-term report, the best and worst films from the first half of the year, January through June 2017. I've already done number 10, number 6 of my best of the year so far. Here's 10 to 6 of my worst of the year so far. So at number 10, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. Now I'm including this because I loved the original Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies. I thought they were really charming and funny and most importantly, they were films that were proper family entertainment. The Long Haul is a reboot, which is a story of a bunch of people really annoying each other, stuck on a long road trip, getting on each other's nerves. Frankly, I would rather be stuck on a long road trip with a bunch of people really annoying each other than watch this film again. It is tooth gratingly terrible. The men on that ship are looking for Jack, so I'm going to swim for it. Karina, stop that. No, 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 don't stop that. This has gone far enough. No, it has not. I saw her ankles. You'd have seen a lot more if you kept your cake holes shut. And number nine, Pirates of the Caribbean, Salazar's Revenge, or, as it's called in some territories, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, or, as it's called in my house, Pirates of the Caribbean, does Johnny Depp really need the money this badly? This is not the worst of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, nor indeed is it the longest. The novelty this time is that it appears to have been cobbled together entirely from outtakes from the script from Carry On Columbus. I'm a horologist, no shame in that, madam. Ooh, uh, titty ye not. Don't worry, I wasn't. Now at number eight, something which demonstrates that it's not just Hollywood blockbusters which are terrible. At number eight, Slack Bay, a comedy directed by Bruno Dumont, who is, let's face it, not best known for comedy. He made The Life of Jesus and Hadvich and Camille Claudel 1915. Now, Bruno Dumont has dipped his toe into the waters of comedy before and things like Petit Quinquin, which some people really loved and I absolutely hated. The story in Slack Bay, a bunch of posh people go to the seaside where they patronize the locals who turn out to be cannibals. How bad is it? Well, Juliette Binoche is in it. And you know how Juliette Binoche is absolutely brilliant in absolutely everything? Well, in this, she's complete. I'm thinking! What are you thinking? I'm thinking we're probably going to die here. On to number seven and my worst films of the year so far, January through June. And it is, of course, The Mummy. Now, there have been so many debates about who is to blame for The Mummy, and everyone thinks it's Tom Cruise, because Tom Cruise had too much control, Tom Cruise had too much power. The movie itself is basically Tom Cruise the movie. It just happens to have a universal creature feature connection, and it's somehow setting up the dark universe. However, although I think it is largely Tom Cruise's fault, I would just like to have a special mention for Russell Crowe, who once again goes off into the strange waters of his explorations of an English accent. Oi, Crowe, shut it! This job is crucial. Without us out there... Come on! No one can get hurt! Which brings me to number six and the end of the first half of my worst films of the year so far. You remember how Starsky and Hutch, the NAF TV series, was reinvented for the screen in a kind of postmodern, funny way? And you remember how when Baywatch came to the screen, it was kind of funnier than you thought it was going to be? And you remember what they did with 21 Jump Street? It was like a NAF TV series, but they brought it to the screen, it was kind of funnier than you thought it was going to be. And you remember Chips? Like it was just terrible. It was just really, really terrible. Where is Eric Estrada when you need him? Oh, no, he's in Chips. And he's terrible. Where? So there we are, my worst films of the year so far, January through June, numbers 10 to 6. Tune in to the next Kermit Uncut blog for number 5 to number 1 of my best films of the year so far.